Hey, what's up guys? So you may know that when we get a new product, a camera or mount or whatever, we like to wait like three, four, five, sometimes six months before making any type of review or video about it. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you um, what we think about this, uh, this camera here, which is our very first full frame camera. And it's from QHY, so it's a brand we never actually um, used before besides with a Pole Master. So we'll pick a night. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be a, once again a full moon night, uh, kind of similar to the video we made about our first time imaging from home, so Bottle 9 zone. Uh, back then we imaged the California Nebula with a ZW camera. So this one will do the same with this camera and once again the triad filter uh, from home, Bottle 9 on a full moon night. So let's do it and hopefully we get a nice image. So tonight I'm going to use the Triad Ultra filter from uh, Regent Telescopes. The only time in the past I used this filter was for the California Nebula uh, NGC 1499 on our first try ever uh, of imaging in the backyard. So it's going to be really nice to try a different target now. And uh, I'm going to go for M17, the Omega Nebula. And I might do another one, we'll see. I'm not sure how much time I'll need in total. Maybe five hours total, I think, or maybe more. I think the California Nebula was six hours in total. But I might do two nights per target, I think. This video was filmed a while ago, but I never got around to editing it. So since we got the QHY128C, we actually captured several targets that all turned out fantastic. Our first light was on the Iris Nebula, as you can see here. We also got M13, Marcaion's Chain, the Western Veil Nebula from home, and Pickering's Triangle, also from home. We also imaged M17, but it is the whole point of this video, so you will see it at the end. We use this camera on our 8-inch astrograph, which we only use on the Mighty Mount, which has been working really well so far. If you like unboxing stuff, let's quickly unbox the QHY128C, which was a bit shy at first and did not want to get out. Alright, so what do we have here? Look at this, it's all like space stuff. I love it. I'm guessing this is for the uh, drivers. And here is the camera. So let's see. Uh, first impression is pretty big compared to what I'm used to. Um, it's big, but it's pretty light. I mean, it's not really heavy, so that's nice. Here is, I'm guessing, the. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is one huge sensor. By the way, the uh, QHY 128. C is a full frame sensor, so as you can see it's really huge. And I believe it's our first full frame sensor ever. Like even from our DSLR days, like we never had a full frame sensor before. So that's nice. And then on the back here we have a USB 3 port as well as uh, a port for the um, power. I'm surprised there is no USB, like a regular USB uh, on the side. Let's see uh, what we have in this box, I'm guessing the cables. Hmm, huh. interesting. It's like an Apple box, it's like all nice. Oh wow, there's many of them. Okay, they give you one for the uh, wall outlet, which is nice if you're imaging from home. And then we have one more cable here, which appears to be the USB 3 cable. And a power cable. Okay, and we have one last box. This is a power brick that goes with uh, the first cable here. So I received this one in the box as well as this thing. So I'm guessing those two go together and then those attach here like that. That's my guess. And hopefully we can achieve back focus this way. That is one big camera. Well, compared to what I'm used to, at least. Yes, we never owned a full frame camera before, so this is pretty exciting. So here is what our framing would look like if we used our usual ASI 1600 monochrome camera. As you can see, it's pretty tight, especially since Sky Safari does not show all the outer gas around M17. And here is what our framing will look like with the QHY128C and the same telescope. 
it's pretty crazy how big the difference is. That framing is perfect because we'll be able to get all that nice gas around the nebula. So I'm gonna use the QHY CCD uh, 128C camera. It's a one-shot color camera, so perfect for the trial filter. And it's a full frame camera, let me show you. It's a full frame, so you can have a nice wide view of the target. The triad filter attaches to the comma character pretty easily. The good thing is that you can use this filter with both crop sensor and full frame cameras without crazy minuting. We suggest you don't forget to take flats if you use a full frame camera though. If you want to see our review of the triad filter, we have both a post on our website and a video where we image the California Nebula. What's annoying when you have two different mounts is that you have to replace the adapter for the pole master for each. So this one is for the Atlas. I have to take it out so that I can put the uh, Mighty mount adapter on the, on the pole master. What I'm doing now is polar lining using the pole master on the Atlas. The only thing I don't like about it is the uh, altitude adjustment knobs that are very hard to use, but this one is a breeze. Yeah, I'm pretty far off. So M17 is going to rise, I believe, around uh, 1 a.m. Let me check actually right now. Um, M17 is going to rise at 9.28, which means zero degrees in altitude. So for it to be around 25 degrees, is what I aim for, uh, is going to be probably around, let's see, right now it's 10.15 p.m. If we go to an hour later, it's gonna be around uh, 18 degrees. So yeah, so around midnight, I'll be able to image M17. It's gonna be high enough for the uh, atmospheric turbulences and stuff uh, to not be in the way. I'm going to aim for three minutes of exposures and uh, a total of you know two nights, two full nights on it. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. When the mount is calibrating and creating a T-point model, which means it's loose to a bunch of areas on the sky and plate solves, I actually use a regular light pollution filter instead of the triad. The triad filter is the narrow band filter, so unless I take longer exposures, stars will not show as bright as if I were to use a broadband filter. Once the T-point model is done, I switch back to the triad to image. Once again, for some reason, I picked a full moon night. But anyway, it's funny how the sky is always perfectly clear whenever the moon is up. I imaged M17 from 11 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. and did the same the next day. Both of these nights, I also ran the small rig as I was finishing up a 40-hour project on the Seder region. We have a video showing how we got this picture on our channel. I had to crop a bunch of stuff out, and even more because, well, I'm terrible at taking flats. But even then, the framing looks nice and we do see some outer gases all around the nebula. This is my first result at processing M17. I quickly hated it, so I went back for another day of processing and came up with this result, which I prefer a bit more. So this camera is now our official you know, go-to camera, especially if we are doing um, broadband, so LRGB, such as for clusters or galaxies. That way we don't have to you know, bother with filters. When it comes to um, narrowband, so nebulae, we'll most likely keep using our monochrome camera, so ZSI 1600, but we will also use this one uh, sometimes, mostly from home, with a triad filter. We love using this one for broadband mostly. And um, I really wish one day we can use a, you know, a full-frame mono camera, 
it's gonna be pretty insane. But those are super expensive and also the filters are super expensive because of the size of the frame. So uh, for now we'll stick to a full frame color camera and use our crop sensor mono camera for most nanoband images. So we'll see you guys next time and kill us guys. <laughs>